Hi guys, this is Paula Brett, and I'm making this video for you in Mount Zagham International School. And I want to say hello to Miss Sandra, Calum, Tatum, Inda, and Oliver. This video is for you. So, I make mandalas, or mandalas, or however you want to say it, tomato, tomato. And I have been making them out of candy and all other kinds of things. I started with the candy and then I started to incorporate different kinds of things that I found like toys and flowers and anything. So I'm going to show you guys my process today so you can see a little bit about how I do it and then I want to see how you guys make them. And remember, you can use any kind of material you want. It's up to you and your teacher and whatever you do. You can go outside and do it with leaves and things that you find. You can do it with, you can draw the mandalas, of course. You can do it with magazine cutouts. You can do, you can make mandalas out of anything. It's basically a circle. So the circular form is what you're working with and you're working with radial symmetry. So that means everything is going to be symmetrical somehow as you do it. I first learned about them through the Tibetan Buddhist monks who make them out of sand on the ground and then blow them away. And it's like a prayer that they create when they're doing the sand. Um, it can be a prayer for you. It can be an intention for you. It can be just doing it in a way that makes you feel peaceful because it really is about peace and that's what we're doing. So. Um, you can make it like an offering of peace to the world. So you don't have to do that, but that's something that I think is really cool about them um, is that they're, they're pleasing and they're, they're peaceful to people. And they also kind of have like this universal symbol of peace. So, okay guys, enough talking from me. I'm going to get out my materials and I'm going to show you how to, how I make one on the ground. Okay. Okay, so we are here with our materials and our white piece of paper. And I like to work on the floor, mostly because when I take a photograph of it, it's easier to just stand over it and, and photograph it like that. So, because um, at the end, the end product is a photograph. Okay, so I'm going to start out by getting a, a guide to help me with my circle. So this is a, the bottom of a planter. You can use anything, and, and usually I don't even use a guide, but this is just something that I'm going to start with to help me keep it in a circular format. Okay, and there's my circle. Um, and then you start to think about what kind of materials you want to use, and you think about color schemes, because the color schemes are what make it really, that can bring it together. So I thought I was going to start with some green. So here I've got some um, silk flowers, and these are kind of a greeny yellow. And I don't know, I'm just going to start pulling these apart. And I'm going to start just creating with flowers first to see what I want to um, make. And this is three dimensional now, but it'll be two dimensional in a photographic format. I mean, I know that you could use these, you could do this on paper plates and you could glue them down. You could do all kinds of things. Um, so we're going to do kind of a greeny yellow theme. So in this, I've got a box of toys. All right, so I'm thinking these dinosaurs might be kind of cool. And I'm working from the center and going outwards. So um, maybe these are going to lie this direction, more flat. And I always try and, um, you know, think, I mean, these are really fun for sure. It's fun to do. But you also have to take time and look at the placement between objects and how, how everything is going to be symmetrical, um, see if I've repeated any of these animals, no, they're all about the same, and see if I like it. You can always change it if you don't like it. Maybe you don't like this design, you want to do something different. Um, I've got some green M&Ms, and you see about these. Okay, and sometimes you can get more random. You know, you can just kind of pour these things down. All right, I'm just going to start pouring these things down. And I'm working a little bit faster because I'm on video for you, but... This is another way of filling in spaces. I tend to not like to have too many white spaces. We see I've got these dark green and the light green. Maybe I'll use the light green ones towards the center. Okay, I've got three greens. Light green, um, a medium green, and a dark green. So maybe 
I have to sort these and put the light green ones towards the center. Take out the medium green ones. And then I'm probably going to fast forward this video so that you don't have to sit here and spend forever watching this. And I have no idea what kind of candies you guys have over there in Papa. And if you can find candy like this so easily and cheaply, I don't know. But, but again, it could be anything. You can use any kind of materials you want. So there. Okay, so that's kind of cool looking. Filling this in with all these little light green colors. So I'm going to move from light green to dark green. That's my idea. You guys, you know, you can mix up. I, I choose, think about the color wheel. Think about how the color wheel works. You can use complementary colors. You know what those are? Those are opposite on the color wheel. And that's a really cool combination. You can use analogous colors which are next to each other on the color wheel. I don't know how your teacher talks about colors in the color, but I say analogous. Um, you could do, you know, colors that look, that work together. I would try to just limit your palette a bit and not make it too crazy by using every color because then your design gets lost. Okay, moving into the middle greens. Now I'm moving these flowers away because they're not, they're in my way right now. So, and I'm using like a pentagram type of thing. You can see this is five. So I'm trying to work with that. Now you can use six. I mean, I could use, I could use a hexagonal shape, create a hexagon type of shape. It could be anything. All right, so here's the medium green. And I don't really mind if the M is up or not. Oh, that's not the right green. And you got to work with what you have. That's the other thing. If you don't have enough of one kind of candy or any kind of material, you have to be creative and see what else you could do. Oh, see, we have more of these light green. But that's okay. Let's just use the middle green. I think that's as much as the middle green as we have. And let's try and arrange these in a way that looks cool. So it's circular. And sometimes I have to stand up over it because I'm not really getting a perfect circle. But again, perfection is overrated. It doesn't always have to be exactly perfect. We just want to have... It's starting to come together here. It's starting to create like a, a circle with the candy. It's starting to be cool. That one's kind of weird looking on that side. So I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. Getting a feel for what's going on. Okay, there. Now, um, let's see, let me move these just a little bit more closer together. And I'll move the animal heads away just a little bit so I can see them. And then you want to kind of get over it, stand over it so you can tell it's a circle. It's a lot of little fussy kind of movements. And now put the flowers back in. Maybe I don't want to, well, yeah, I like the flowers. Let's do that. Or I could even do something else like maybe use the leaves. So I'm going to pull off the leaves of this flower. Do I like that color combination? Maybe. Oh, that's kind of interesting looking. Maybe I do that. But I don't think I have enough leaves for that, so maybe I won't do that. Okay, this is one different ways of creating. Maybe the maybe this guy has to lay on top of this guy. See, these leaves don't stay down. But I like it. Um, you know what? We're going to change it. No, it's not going to work. I don't have enough leaves, so I'm going to go back to the flowers. So take the plastic part out. Put one of these in the center. Pull the plastic out. And think about placement.
looking. Maybe this one's going to have to have its center removed and yeah. Okay, now next step. Other green things. My candy has been melting. All right, so maybe some of these. You want to alter the variety. Whoa. You want different sizes and shapes. What else? Maybe I don't have enough of those. So I won't use those. These candy candies look the same. It's just something different. And I sometimes organize my candy by color. Oh, we've got these spearmint leaves. Maybe these are better. Take these out. Try again. Okay, the spearmint leaves. These look so good, I want to eat them, but they're over a year old, so I'm not going to eat them. Do, 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 do. Ooh. And now they're... So two leaves on, the each, on each side of the dinosaurs. Tell you they're looking kind of old. That's okay. Alrighty. What's next? Let's use another type of thing. Interesting looking. Maybe some yellow. Okay, I got these yellow guys. These. I don't think I like this yellow. No. Maybe these yellows. These are almonds. You know, you just get creative with how you're going to place these things. Hmm. Okay. Okay, what's next? Oh, I'm kind of off on my circle. I can see it's shorter over here and longer over there, but that's okay. I probably didn't start exactly in the center. And then something else. I have pipe cleaners. Would that be interesting? No. I don't like the way that color fits with those. How about we pause? Okay, we're back with a different view, and I'm gonna finish this up. So I don't know, I've got glow pops in this green tone. I'm just still playing around to see what will work. I don't have enough of those. So I have these funny peeps. I'm changing the lighting with this. Okay, I'll move out of the way. Um, these funny little birds. And maybe they're cool. They add a new dimension. Those are cute. Turn it so it's all facing the same direction. 
and I need some other um, green stuff now. I think I need more green to fill in the yellow. So I've got some more green, these like Lego things. I don't know. I'm not sure at this point what to use. Hold on, pause. Okay, I found some gummies. Some yellow and green gummies. And again, it's not really about perfection. You're just having fun, obviously. And, you know, whatever materials you have, whatever materials you have, you can make mandalas out of anything. So just basically have fun with it. That's the whole point. See how all those are slightly different? And then let's fill it out again with these M&Ms. So let's go back to this light color again. Let's use some lights. What am I doing? You gotta think. Pattern. And you gotta think about how each thing relates to the other thing in terms of space. I have enough. Whoop. So I gotta steal one from in here. Whee! And move those around. Oh, okay. That's fine. And then maybe a green one at the end to just bring the green, the dark green, back in. Balance, harmony, balance, symmetry, joy, peace, love, fun, good times. Okay, wait, we've got some more of these now I found. I think I want to make these. No, that's not going to work. You trial and error it. All right, I think that's good, you guys. What do you think? I kind of like this one. I might do a little bit more to it later, but that's basically how I make a mandala. All right. Turn this back on myself. Hi. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed the video and tell Mr. Brooks I said hi. And um, tell me what you make. Show me what you make. I'm excited to see. All right. Thank you for watching. Bye. Whoops. I also forgot to say the last, very last step is... I photograph it by standing directly over it, put it into Photoshop, clean up the spaces around it, and then make a print. And there you have it, your mandala. All right, thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye.